Hello, and welcome to this presentation about how to read a political cartoon. I'm Mr. Nofke. And I'm Mrs. Berg. And today we're going to walk you through the different ways you can uh, apply your skills to analyze political cartoons. Your target for the day is to identify the characteristics of a political cartoon to gain understanding of a cultural impression of an, of an issue. So let's begin with this. What is a political cartoon? A political cartoon is an illustration or cartoon that contains a message that relates to current events or people. What's the purpose? Well, there's lots of purposes of political cartoons. I mean, let's be honest, they're entertaining, they're fun. We get a laugh out of them, but they also offer us insights into certain cultural assumptions or attitudes towards current events or events in history. And sometimes the author will use them to persuade the reader to um, their point of view by offering them insights or to lead them down a path of events to a different understanding. So how do you analyze a political cartoon? Well, oftentimes you need to access prior knowledge to understand it, and that's gonna provide you the context. But breaking down these skills will help you to understand the cartoonist point of view. So some characteristics to look for. Symbolism. Symbolism are objects that stand for larger concepts or ideas. For an example, you might see the Grim Reaper and that's going to represent death, while Uncle Sam might represent the United States. Exaggeration. These are items that are overdone to make a point. Oftentimes, people's physical appearance of big hair or big ears or big lips. Labeling is to identify people and objects within the cartoon that the cartoonist wants to make extremely clear to the reader. Some questions you want to ask yourself while you're analyzing a political cartoon. What is the issue that the political cartoon is talking about? And what is the cartoonist's point of view or opinion? All political cartoons provide bias and they show you an exact claim, thesis, or idea or argument that the cartoonist would like to make. So now we're going to walk you through some different uh, uh, examples of the skills that Mrs. Berg just mentioned. The first one is labeling. Again, where the cartoonist labels or physically writes text on the cartoon itself to help the reader understand what the shape or image is supposed to represent or mean. In this case, the cartoonist labeled the person in the shape of Africa with the word Africa. This again helps you clearly see that this is Africa. There's no doubt. And then they attached two balls and chains um, to the person of Africa, and by labeling words such as hunger, AIDS, debt, corruption, it makes it very clear what is holding back or chaining down the continent of Africa, all part of labeling. Then you have symbolism. Cartoonists are going to use objects or symbols to stand for larger concepts or ideas. Here's an example. Take a look at the picture. You've got a person texting while driving, and the words text, text, and I'm texting while driving are examples of lab labeling. Then over here you have the Grim Reaper who's texting back, LOL. The Grim Reaper is symbolic of death. So the cartoonist wants you to know, beware of texting while driving because the Grim Reaper could be laughing at you. Uh, that ain't that a powerful cartoon. Exaggeration is probably one of the most um, popular forms of political cartoons. Um, again, as we mentioned earlier, this means that the usually a body part such as nose and this, or this case hair, sometimes the ears or lips are exaggerated beyond normal proportions to help make a point. Here, Donald Trump's hair is exaggerated to help um, kind of, uh, again, make the point about some of his claims and the, and the poll data. An analogy is a comparison between two unlike things. This is one of those more complex ideas of political cartoons. This is where the cartoonist is gonna compare a complex issue or situation with something that's a little bit more familiar. If you take a look at the picture below, you could see the tree is labeled apartheid and the person underneath the tree is labeled NP. Now you're gonna need some prior context and some knowledge to understand that NP is the Nationalist Party and that this is representative of the Nationalist Party that was in charge in South Africa during the apartheid. And the apartheid were very extreme, rigid laws of discrimination. And so this is an analogy of a tree toppling and falling onto someone is representative of the apartheid ending and that the apartheid collapsed uh, onto the Nationalist Party, meaning that when the apartheid ended, the Nationalist Party lost its control. 
Our final one is irony. Irony, or it's ironic. Like a joke that I can make right now. If a tree falls in the woods, doesn't make a sound. That's an ironic given our last slide. But when we look at the cartoon, we have our good friend Donald Trump here, who loves to make a lot of comments, right? And one of his big comments this year is, build a wall, build a wall, right? So we use labeling here. We see that labeling, the, our cartoonist has labeled build a wall, and the cartoonist has labeled some of his platform, some of the things he says, which the cartoonist considers racist, anti-feminist, and so forth, right? Based on those labeling, the cartoonist drew the wall inside Donald Trump's mouth, which is ironic given what he uh given the comments and labeling previously said well folks thanks for enjoying our hope you enjoyed our presentation about how to analyze political cartoons this is mr nafki encouraging you to continue learning oops totally forgot this so we're gonna roll with it because i started to sign off like a radio host mrs berg's gonna walk you through this one while i put my head down in shame <laughs> Okay, so let's practice. Let's take a look at this political cartoon and see exactly the different elements of the cartoon we just talked about. So if you take a look here, an example of symbolism would be this apple. Apple, as we know, is apple products. This is something that's very familiar in our own culture and our background. Then an example of labeling are these arrows that are pointed around the person holding an iPad, an iTouch, an iPhone. This is an example of labeling. The author wanted to be extremely clear. Then an example of exaggeration is this entire person. Do you really think that someone's going to walk around with all of these devices at once? Probably not. So he's exaggerating that idea. And then what's ironic is at the bottom here, when you look at this one, that it's labeled you broke. So he's being comical and funny with the fact that this person's holding an iPad, an iMac, an iTouch, an iPhone. And actually, in reality, this just makes the person broke in the end. So this is a cartoonist, his claim or his argument is that really when you buy all of these products, you're just wasting your money. Well, I guess now I can say goodbye. And this is Mr. Nofke signing off. Thanks for watching and stay classy.